Hello and in these set of tutorials what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to actually create a mat, uh, an environment mat using uh, the tools you've already used. So we're going to use Maya, Nuke and Photoshop and we're going to look at how we can put those together to create environment maps. Um, so the main focus of this tutorial, there will be a few bits and pieces that are specific to what we're doing here that I'm going to walk you through but the main thrust of this series of tutorials is to give you the general kind of approach and the general kind of workflow that we're going to use. So the first thing I want to do is kind of explain what camera projection is. So you're already familiar with uh, in Maya of um, using UV mapping, where you'll unfold a, tech, a, a model uh, onto a, a flat surface and then create a texture for it. Well, this is a different approach. What we do here is we actually create an image and then project it onto a geometry. So, so imagine if we had a, a projector, like a data projector that we, we use for doing PowerPoint presentations, imagine that we were shining that onto our geometry. Okay, so just to demonstrate that in Photoshop, this is the actual image that I've put together uh, for for the mat. Okay, and then here we are in Maya projecting this onto our geometry. And you can see there's the geometry here. Okay, and you can actually see that uh, you know I've got uh, an animated camera move moving through this scene, and it's working quite effectively. Okay, but to get a better understanding of this, if we go into our perspective view, okay, you can see that that actually, you know, the technique only works from a very specific point of view. Okay, and then just to kind of demonstrate that what's actually happening here is that yeah, so what's actually happening here is that this image here is actually being projected from this camera. Okay, now. It's slightly confusing, but in both Mare and Nuke and, and in other packages, this projection technique doesn't use a projector, it uses a camera as a projector. So it's often called camera projection because you're using the camera to actually project an image. Um, the, the, this is slightly confusing, but the reason they use this approach is actually cameras and projectors share very common kind of uh, setups in terms of things like field of view and position and orientation. OK, so um, this so basically this is a normal Maya camera, but this this but what this camera is being is, is ha what's happening is this camera is being used to actually uh, set up a projection system to project this image onto this geometry. Now, just to demonstrate this, if I move, so I'm just going to move. Um, let's just move some of the geometry around. So I'm just going to move this geometry around here. If I move the geometry, notice how the texture moves changes as as we move the geometry just as it, well, it would be if you moved a piece of card or something in front of a projector so literally this image has been thrown onto this geometry by by being projected from this camera okay similarly i'm just going to undo that similarly if i go and move this building you'll see a similar thing happen okay so you can see that this image is literally being projected from this camera here okay in fact let's go do some undos there okay so um so effectively what we're actually doing is rather than um uh rather than sort of taking a uh uh a geometry and unfolding it and then creating a texture for it what we're actually doing is basically painting our geometry with with images okay uh, hence it's kind of called matte painting okay so kind of painting our geometry here um, now obviously um, uh, obviously uh, obviously as you can see camera projection is very dependent on the point of view so if I move the camera too far the whole thing is going to break down okay but for uh, but for most, you know, but for creating an environment map with a very small camera movement, this technique is very powerful, okay, and works very well. Um, so it differs from a sort of full 3D approach because what we do is we basically, you know, we, if you're doing a normal 3D model, what you do is you create the 3D model and then you create the texture to fit on the 3D model. In this case, what we do is we start with photographs. OK, uh, and then we make those photographs 3D. So we kind of start from the other way around. Rather than starting with a geometry and creating a texture for geometry, we start with a set of photographs and then make those photographs 3D. OK, so it's a slightly different approach. 
obviously the conventional way of, of texturing in terms of UV texturing is more flexible because obviously you can actually, you know, with UV texturing, you can texture the whole, you know, the whole building, uh, for example, and I'd be able to then render that building from any point of view. But obviously using this technique, I can only really work from certain points of view. Um, um, the, but the uh, but the great uh, you know but the great sort of benefit of using this technique is it doesn't require a lot of specialist skills. It you know I, if I'm going to do a 3D model, I need a modeler, I need a light lighting, uh, a texturer, uh, a lighter, a compositor, a look developer. I need various people in order to be able to kind of make that that work. With this technique, I can just use a matte painter uh, uh, and, and use fairly sort of simple skills within Nugent Mayer to kind of produce a, a really effective environment. So it's a kind of you know it, it's 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 it, you wouldn't you know, a single person could have the skills to do this. You wouldn't need to have you know a whole set of specialists to to use this sort of technique. Um, uh, and and obviously when you're using this sort of this approach, then obviously you are creating the assets very much for for a, a specific shot. So let's just talk you through the process that I use to create this. I've got this on my uh, little PowerPoint here, so I'm just going to show you this slide uh, here. Okay. So the process I went through was I created a very basic 3D model of my scene to start with. Okay, and that was you know, and then I also kind of modelled my camera movement there. And then what I did was I rendered out I rendered out a wireframe of the scene and then used that wireframe to allow me to take pictures of buildings and roads and pavements, all the bits that I needed to make my environment, so photograph those from the correct aspect ratio. And then put all those images together and composited them together in Photoshop. And then uh, into a, to create a single mat. Then what I do is I take that mat from Photoshop, export it as a TIFF, and then project that onto the geometry. And then at that point, what, I'm, what I might want to do is go back into Photoshop and then kind of refine the mat a little bit more. Okay, and then as a final thing, what I can do, I don't have to do this, but what I can do is export all of this from Maya into Nuke so that we can then use it in our composite. And it's those steps that I'm going to talk you through in this series of tutorials.